if inflation is transitory, why are we going to have to suffer pain? What's up, everybody? Welcome aboard to Bubba's Bottom Line for Sunday, September 11th. And of course, uh, a tragic day in uh, in American history. Uh, 21 years ago today, uh, we had a senseless terrorist uh, come and destroy the world towers and kill many innocent Americans for absolutely no reason. Um, We had planes crashing into buildings. Uh, never forget. Okay. Again, it, it apparently the uh, current administration is forgetting it all as they uh, try to uh, beg and, and, and get oil and things from them, but uh, never forget. And I think that is one of the big things. If you're a golf fan that bothers you about the, the live tour. Okay. Not that they're getting all the money. It's the really where the money comes from. But again, it is in memoriam, and it is uh, the September 11th, and and never forget all the innocent people that we lost and the the, the problems that it has caused in the country and and around the globe. So uh, always remember uh, September 11th is a great American tragedy uh, for lives lost and for violation of a lot of our freedom, which has actually led into a lot more of the destruction of our freedom. But as we look into the inflation picture, uh, as we said all along, inflation is not transitory. It was only going to get worse. And, and unfortunately, we have not seen the worst yet. The worst is not, not the best is yet to come. The worst is yet to come. And, you know, I think that, uh, again, this is the problem when you have people that are lying to you, that refuse to, to, to tell us the truth. Uh, this is the problem when you have too much, too much government, too much Federal Reserve, and not enough of a, of, of a free market system. But you can bet your ass that, uh, interest rates are going up and the 10 years got a, a heck of a chance to be at 5% before the year's over. It's a hell of a move from here. But I, again, this is, this is not going away. In fact, I will assure you it is getting much worse. Okay. I mean, Fed funds also shows that household net worth decreased by $6 trillion in just in quarter two. So we can see that there are many, many issues out there, uh, and they're not going away. It's, 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 you know, tomorrow we have a, a WASD report, you know, for the grains and, uh, you know, they had, the grains were up big on Friday. Now they've been very waffly, but they did rally hard. And, and I think that when you look at the, the bigger picture, okay, you know, we're not going to, we're going to have a lack of production. You know that we're not getting, or the world isn't getting wheat and other grains from the Ukraine and Russia. You know that Argentina, Brazil, and Australia had lousy years. Uh, and of course, we're off to a lousy start as well with, with the deep drought and, and weather. And our production is going to be significantly lower, which is going to drive prices massively higher. And I, a year from now, don't be surprised if you're paying $10 for a loaf of bread. Okay. This is this is where it's going to get really tricky to watch. But again, tie in the high the high interest rates. You know, never in history has the Federal Reserve, the imbeciles of the cartel, hiked rates into a recession. Uh, but of course, they want to continue to tell us that this is not it's a new recession. It's it's like you know in the nineties the new economy, old economy. <laughs> You know, you didn't have to make money or if you had, if you had a dot com behind your name, you, you simply just went higher. Okay. And of course, we know that's all false. And so when you see, you know, and, and you have GDP, you've had two consecutive negative quarters. 
And, and they came out with a, a big number for, to the positive side in the, for the third quarter, and they've already revised it down to negative once again. So there's, there's a lot of manipulation in numbers here, which is always a problem. You know, the numbers don't lie. The way that people compile them and put them out creates the lie. Okay. And, and, and this becomes a, a, a bigger problem as well. Um, you know, I think that you're seeing that central banks around the globe have continued to hike rates. We saw last week a uh, Canada hike. We saw the ECB hike. And think about what's going on in, in Germany and in the UK. Okay. They've got no energy. They got no water. Russia is not shipping right now. Okay. And the Nord one is shut down basically. And, and, and of course we could certainly be helping, but we don't want to because we don't want to help ourselves. You know, so we, we, we go back into this, this climate change debate. Okay. And whether you believe in it or not, either way, you do not have the facilitation of, of being able to go totally green now anyways, which is why every week I ask you the same question at what cost do we want to destroy the middle class? Okay. You're already seeing this in California. Now this is what you're seeing in California would be a small sample size to what's going to happen through the rest of the United States, the rest of the country, and probably the rest of the globe. The power grid is, cannot handle it all. So California is now going through rolling blackouts or rolling brownouts, whatever you're going to call them, which means there are certain points of time and day you have no electricity, no power, no air conditioning. Okay. And fortunately, it's only been 100 degrees there every day. So it, it's really a problem. So you can buy a Tesla on Monday, but you can't charge it on Tuesday. And this is, this is where every presidential election, every, not just this one, has failed us because every single one of them had promised to fix the power grid, to fix the infrastructure of this country. And yet we sit here with the same antiquated power grid that needs to be adjusted and needs to be fixed because if you don't think it can be hacked into, you are sorely mistaken because they could hack it pretty easily, uh, anybody who wants to, uh, okay? And, and I think that this is, this, this is a problem that that is going to continue and this is a battle and this is where it this is where the logic gets separated from the stupidity uh we are destroying a class of people so either it is being done intentionally by the progressives and by the current administration or it is being done uh you know accidentally i would say more to the on purpose view uh, I, I wouldn't be surprised. You want a conspiracy theory? I wouldn't be surprised to see Saudi Arabia drop their oil prices, even if it is a, at a loss to them, which it wouldn't be. But let's just say it was to make sure that this administration stays in power and that there is not a red wave in the House uh, during the November elections coming up in about two months. Because, of course, when you when you when the leadership of your country is weak, Okay. When, when you're surrounded by weakness and you're actually begging your enemies for oil and things like that, and you're, you continue to show that weakness, why would, why would Saudi Arabia not want to keep this administration in power as it stands? Why would they want to take the chance that we go back to becoming a net exporter of oil? Now, I'm not saying it's going to happen at just theory, right? But it is something to think about. Uh, but when we talk about the, the food shortages that are coming, India is no longer going to be shipping out rice, which they are the, the, the number one exporter of rice. Okay. So that just goes to higher prices. Uh, grains, rice, you know, other products are going to continue to rise in price as we continue to ignore the, the basic problems around them. And everything, every problem that we have right now, more or less ties to fossil fuels. And I think that's where we make the big mistake, thinking that we're doing the right thing. And again, whether you're a believer in climate change or not, you have to decide at what cost are you going to destroy everything. And you couldn't get climate change done that fast. What are you going to do? 
with now record burning of coal throughout the country, throughout the world. Okay, we already, we've already, we've always talked about that 40% of the population was represented by India and China. And now other countries are going back to coal because it's a cheap energy source. You know, when you outprice a product that a country can no longer use, it becomes very problematic. Okay, so we've got a lot of problems that have to be dealt with. And then, of course, if you look at the collapse in housing, uh, now you may not see it yet, you may not realize it yet, but you have, you're down from year over year, you're down 57% in what they call mortgage locks, which is people locking in mortgage rates, 57%. In my neighborhood, houses don't sell anymore. They used to sell in less than one day, okay, for over list. And now they are no longer selling, okay? Uh, and, and of course, you've got so many issues that should be dealt with and can be dealt with but again, this is where the, my problem comes in with all this is that the Federal Reserve and the government don't want to do so. Now, the big problem there is between the two of them, okay, they create nothing but debt. They create nothing but hidden tax to Americans. They create nothing but problems because they continue to either create or print money, okay, and then you tie that in with fractional banking and you've got all of this worthless paper, which is now taxation without representation. So you, you continue to ignore the problems that are in front of you that you can fix and you allow them to continue to compound themselves, creating much anger and much strife and, and a lot of things around this country. Okay, that are only going to get worse as you continue to, to make people poor. Okay, you know, the middle class, typically the hardest working class, continues to do their thing. And of course, they're now making so much less money that despite the stock markets being wherever they are, it's not enough because we do not make enough to keep up with inflation. We do not make enough to... To, to continue to to roll here. And this becomes, you know, once again, a, a much bigger problem. Okay. And for the week, a uh, very sad note, obviously, is uh, the queen has passed away at 96 years old. Uh, a dynasty uh, of a monarchs, the longest serving queen or monarch in a thousand years. Okay. And of course, we now have King Charles, uh, but obviously, listen, 96 years old, not, not bad. You know, who would settle for 96? But obviously, a, a, a sad day uh, for them. And of course, obviously, you saw that uh, soccer was shut down and the golf tournament was shut down for a day. Uh, in the meantime, again, we've got our own problems here. And we're going to talk more about it and talk about our markets report right after the break. This is Bubba's Bottom Line. It is Sunday. The 11th of September. And again, remember, remember to never forget what this day means in American history. Bubba's bottom line. We'll step out for a break. We'll be right back with our market report after the break. Well, kids, what's going on, everybody? And of course, uh, we continue to see lots of crap going on and nothing too good. Uh, but we do have some good things for you. Uh, and number one, if we look at trade your brokerage, uh, as you know, or maybe you don't know, but Bubba's, uh, Bubba's P Bubba Palooza, which appear, which happens every December in Las Vegas, where we have a three day seminar, uh, which is hard work for three days. We go after it and teach you how to trade and teach you and live trade with you and do all kinds of good stuff. Uh, but that's going on. And of course, we're going to live stream the event as well. And if you have an account with Trade Your Brokerage or you're going to open one with them, they will give you an honor the early bird special, which was $9.97 for in live or $500 for uh, the live streaming. Uh, that's Trader Brokerage, try.trader.com forward slash Bubba. That's try.trader.com forward slash Bubba. And remember that they're also only $10 a month. We have the ability to auto trade your portfolio if you're an equity member at no charge. Okay. And if you have a hedging license, you can hedge your portfolio as well if you've been through the hedging class. 
And that's try.trader.com forward slash Bubba. In the meantime, don't forget about our, our partners and friends at the Capital Trading Group. Uh, you know, they are from a futures and, and commodity standpoint, by far the best broker, which is why they hold 90% of mine. I have other brokerage accounts, just full disclosure, but, uh, CTG is phenomenal. Their service is second to none. And of course, everybody I talked to you about, I have vetted myself. So that's info.capitaltradinggroup.com forward slash Bubba. That's info.capitaltradinggroup.com forward slash Bubba. And it's on the sides if you, if you missed it. Uh, in the meantime, in our high school program at patreon.com forward slash Bubba Trading, that's patreon.com forward slash Bubba Trading. Now let's get back to Bubba's bottom line and, of course, our market report. Welcome back. It is Bubba's bottom line. It is Sunday, September 11th. And as I remind you to never forget and, you know, hug and kiss a soldier or a, and, a, and a first responder, because again, the devastation that was caused uh, is should never have been. So we can never forget and never let it happen again. In the meantime, markets had uh, what we'll call a, a a dead cat bounce, a short covering rally, a short squeeze, uh, whatever whatever you'd like to name it. That's what it was. Uh, these markets are weak. They're, the economy is is shit. We are in big, big trouble, but yet we continue to hide and ignore from it. Now, again, markets and the economy don't always have to go in the same direction, so I don't want you to get confused like it's run out. But I think that this dead cat bounce or short covering rally has run its course, and I would look to be a seller of any additional rallies from here. In the meantime, uh, for the week, major indices were higher with a big late kick on Thursday and Friday. Uh, and I would suggest that they would be sellable. And we are, we are short, uh, across the board, all four major indices. And I think that, uh, obviously I'm very, I may be wrong, but I'm very comfortable with, with being short them. Okay. Uh, and I think that, uh, as you, as we look around, uh, the bond markets, okay, bonds and notes are continuing to get crushed, which is what we opened up with talking about the, um, the interest rates are going higher and they're going higher. Okay. Look again, you can say whatever you want. It never made sense when the bonds rallied and the bonds are going, the uh, bonds are going to continue to tank as far as we're concerned. And we remain short. Uh, the metals had kind of a mixed week, but they look awful. Gold, silver, and platinum look awful. Okay. Gold looks the worst right now. Uh, and I think we're going much lower from here. Uh, we are so short both gold and silver. We no longer trade platinum because it is not liquid enough for our group. Uh, and again, it's not that I'm not a fan of gold longer term. Again, remember, I'm a big fan of owning gold and owning silver as an investment and owning it in physical. I am not a fan of paper. I think paper is 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 phony. And I don't think that there's enough paper. I've got enough gold in the world to handle all the paper that's out there. Okay. So, uh, but certainly and only buy with what you can afford and you're not going to have to sell tomorrow because if you have to sell tomorrow, you're not going to get a price you're going to want. Okay. In the meantime, we remain short gold and silver. Uh, the crude markets, you know, for all the gyrations last week, they were still down a little bit for the week. It looked, you know, Friday was a big up day. Uh, but this is a big problem. This is a, a draining of the SPR, which is dumb. Okay, the SPR, Strategic Petroleum Reserve, is meant for wartime, okay, and it has to be refilled. How are we going to refill it? With what? Because we're not going back to fracking and shale producing so quickly. Uh, so, but, you know, to artificially bring price down, this goes into my conspiracy theory I talked about, you could have, you know, the outside parties that are very comfortable with the weak administration that we have, okay, that they might try to help manipulate the votes speak by bringing down the price. So we forget how high inflation actually is. In the meantime, we are short uh, gold, uh, gold crude, and we're also short natural gas. Now it's interesting that if you, you know, Germany can't get natural gas, they're going to have no heat right now. They're going to have lots of issues. And yet we're prices here are dropping. Okay. And there's plenty of supply. Okay. And remember we can get most of that supply which would help us help them without adding or hurting the carbon footprint that we already have. 
So in the meantime, we're short natural gas as well. Uh, we're short copper. Okay. Again, it had an up week, but we're still short. You know, a lot of these are just strictly dead cat bounces or short covering rallies. That does happen. You know, markets don't go straight up or straight down or too parabolic. There's always going to be uh, some re mean reversion or whatever. In the meantime, the dollar was a little bit lower, but up. It's still over 109. Got over 110 for the week. We're still long dollars. The euro currency, so euro currency spent a lot of time below par. It did close the week above par, but we're still short there as well, looking for it to go to 88 cents. Um, Bitcoin, slightly higher for the week. I mean, again, no big deal. It, it's really just kind of stuck in a little tight little range down around that 20,000 level. Uh, I'm a big believer in it, you know, just from a potential currency. And again, this this central bank manipulation, these cartels that are, are scarfing up our cash and actually making your dollars worthless is, is still certainly a problem. Okay. Uh, and, uh, in the, in the, uh, in the grain markets. Okay. You have, you know, we're, we're long corn, we're long wheat and of course short uh, beans. Uh, tomorrow is WASD. Uh, you had a big rally on Friday, which, you know, look, I think they're going dramatically higher, including soybeans. I think that when you look at the big picture here, we're going to be short on food. Okay, short on food means higher prices because, again, smaller farmers are going to have trouble if they can't get at least their cost up. And the inputs to produce that are so high that they have to do something. Okay, so that to me means with, with short supply, prices can only go higher. Uh, in the meats, you've, we've got a mixed picture. We're short feeders and we're short hogs. We're long fat cattle. Uh, I, I think that I don't think there's a lot of movement in either direction coming there. I think they're going to kind of trade off of the crude oil uh, back and forth. Uh, you know, crude oil goes up, cattle will go down, the higher protein. Again, it's a protein complex. Okay. And of course, in the softs, um, cocoa was down. We're still short. Sugar it was down and we're still, and we are now short. We've reversed a couple of times there. Uh, OJ was higher. We're long. Coffee had a nice big up week. We're long. And cotton, we reversed back to the, uh, the, 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 the longs, the short side, excuse me. Uh, and, you know, again, we'll see what happens. I mean, I think commodities in general are the place to be. I think commodities are going much higher. Uh, because again, you have to remember that production of those, the input cost of all those is very high and going higher. So I think you're going to see and prices going up higher there. In the meantime, you know, the markets look bad. They look weak. The economy looks weak. Everything looks pretty bleak at the moment, but we'll see. And of course, as I said, we do have an election coming up, so we'll see what happens there and see how the markets react. In the meantime, this is Sunday, September 11th, and never forget. And of course, we're going to step out here for a break and come back with my commentary and football picks if you want them. And after Thursday night's pick, you may not want them. This is Bubba's Bottom Line. Todd Bubba Horowitz will be right back after the break. Hey guys, just remember uh, our partners at uh, Trader Brokerage who are also sponsoring our live stream and our Vegas event this year. Okay, first time we've ever had a sponsor, but it's a good marriage, so we figure what the hell. And uh, there's information is scrolling on this side, try.trader.com forward slash Bob and Capital Trading Group, CTG. They're also down there, info at capitaltradinggroup.com forward slash Bubba. And of course, our high school program. Yeah, check them out. Look, I vet everybody for you. It's, it's for you that I do this. Okay, so check them out and see what you think. In the meantime, let's get back to Bubba's bottom line and, of course, my commentary and football picks. Welcome back. It is Bubba's bottom line. It is Sunday, September 11th, and please never forget, it is a tra an American tragedy, the greatest American tragedy, but uh, there are things that are becoming not more tragic, but more disturbing and you know, with the passing of the Queen, we had a professor from Carnegie Mellon say that she wished the Queen died a painful and excruciating death. Now, she came back to blame the genocide that was sponsored by England and so on and so forth. And I go, really? You're a professor at Carnegie Mellon and you have the, the nerve to wish a painful and excruciating death on somebody 
with no exposure, no risk to be fired, which is why I think tenure, especially in education, should be banned and done with. I think tenure is bullshit and it keeps a lot of bad teachers, professors working when they have no business being there. Nobody should be talking and, and wishing a painful and excruciating death on, on the queen. Okay. Whether or not there were things going on because the queen was not the determining factor in what was going on with your country. So I think that you, you, you have to really wonder at the hatred in this country and you look at the wokeism going on and all of the retail companies trying to play the political wheel here now with, with sponsoring things. I'm not going to get into it because I, I don't feel it's the right time for that conversation. But if you understand it, you know what I'm talking about, but Ben and Jerry's and many of the others that continue to do things that are not of natural and free. And I think that we, we really need to get, get our, as, 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 as they said in Kuhan Luke, we need to get our mind right because right now we got some major problems. And of course, this is Bubba's bottom line. Todd Bubba Horowitz. It is Sunday, September 11th. And of course, it is football. It is the opening day of football. And of course, you know that I had the Rams and were they bad on Sunday, but I do like a couple of more underdogs today. And, uh, we like the Pittsburgh Steelers today. And we like uh, the New England Patriots today. All right. So those are our, our, our two main picks for today. In the meantime, have a great day, everybody. Have, enjoy the rest of your weekend. We'll see you tomorrow with a Bubba's Eye update. And we had no changes this week, just rolling forward. So we will talk to you tomorrow with Bubba's Eye update. In the meantime, have a great Sunday and say a prayer for all those we lost on September 11th. Bubba's bottom line, we'll see you tomorrow, everybody.